Welcome to Optimal Play. I'm Brandon. I'm Steven. Steven, the day of reckoning is upon us. <laughs> I think that more Arkham Horror the card game cards came out today than any day in history, including the corset. Um, like, by far. <laughs> My store randomly only had three of them. I, I don't know why. They had two copies of each, but they only had three. So. Oh, interesting. I actually ordered these from Asthma Day because I wanted to make sure to get them right at release, which is when we're recording this. And then I walked into my game store today to get something else, and they had all five packs of uh, copies yeah. of each. So I, I feel bad for not supporting my, my local store, uh, but, oh uh, well, the, the peace of mind knowing that they were like gonna be on pace to be delivered right on schedule uh, was, was nice. Um, yeah, so this is... All right, here's the plan. Um, each of these five Investigator starter decks... Um, has roughly as many new cards as two Mythos packs, is my understanding. So we're going to take these five packs and cover them over the course of ten videos. Are you up for that? Yeah, I guess. And according to the, uh, to the Optimal Play um, rules and regulations, we have to sit here until we, we get through them all. So I hope you went to the bathroom. Uh, no, we'll be, <laughs> we'll be recording them as convenient in the coming weeks. And my goal is to have these videos... Uh, so we, we have some other videos coming up that I don't want to just put on hold for weeks and weeks while we talk Arkham. Uh, we've done some card-by-card -card reviews of Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth. Um, I think I have some more stuff for Deck of Wonders, which is a, a cool solo card game on Kickstarter coming up. Um, and a playthrough of another preview playthrough of a game that I literally can't tell you any more about because I have signed an NDA. So serious stuff. Um, so I'm going to, my goal is to have two new videos a week up on Optimal Play, Monday and Friday. Probably most, but not all of them, will be Investigator Starter Deck discussions um, pretty much now through October. So subscribe if you haven't, keep an eye out, and um, we will have these up um, at whatever pace we can manage them. <laughs> um, Steven, have you, have you followed like, what these packs are exactly? Yeah, uh, they uh, are n five new investigators for each class, and uh, one one for each class. I want, I think. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, and full deck, so like you can just take them out of the box and play them. And it seems like, from what I've seen in the previews, like at least half the cards are new, if not more. I want to say on the reveal stream they said like eighty percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. I think it's going to be a lot. <laughs> Uh, and it's not only a fully playable deck, but they include upgrades as well. Right. Yeah. So it's a completely new type of product for the game, um, which I think is cool because I've always thought the LCG, like the rigid release structure, really holds the game back. So I think it's it's very cool that they have um, that they are are thinking outside the box a little bit on the release structure. And yeah, it is a hell of a lot of new cards. Um, I guess we just dive in. Is there anything else to say yeah. up front? I think, I think uh, <laughs> when we've yeah. got something like a hundred new cards to cover, why wait? Uh, so the first new card in the Jacqueline Investigator deck pack, which were it's called the let's see, the Jacqueline Fine Mystic Investigator Starter deck. <laughs> so a long title for this product, but the first card in it appears to be Jacqueline Fine. I'm not terribly surprised. Uh, she's the psychic. She has five willpower, threes and twos in the other stats. She's clairvoyant traded and says as a reaction, when an investigator at your location would reveal any number of chaos tokens, reveal two additional tokens. Of the revealed tokens, choose and cancel two non-autofail tokens or one autofail token. Limit once per round. On an elder sign, she gets uh, plus one. And if this effect is canceled or ignored, draw one card. Okay, so primarily, I guess, by her own ability. And she builds a 30-card deck out of only Mystic cards, level 0 through 5, and neutral cards, level 0 through 5. Uh, opening thoughts on Jacqueline. That seems like a really powerful ability. I mean... It does. So if you even leave out the auto-fail thing, you're just revealing two additional tokens and canceling two of them. So you pick best out of three uh, as long as none of them are auto fail which is really good um and then there's also this possibility that you might reveal an auto fail and then like two minus ones and you're able to just cancel the auto fail 
which right. is, you know, like a cherry on the top. Yeah, the, the ability to maybe not autofail or to even get your test up so high that you know you can't autofail because you can handle a minus four and a minus three or whatever the worst things in the bag are seems seems real good. Yeah. And I mean, let's not forget, too, there's a lot of tokens that are worse than an auto fail. Like, and she will, when you're using this ability, you're probably never going to have to deal with one of those. You know, like, mm -hmm. if there's a really bad tablet or something, even if both the tablet and the cultist are really bad, like, just cancel both of them. Like, right. Uh, right. May, maybe you take the auto fail, but, but you at least avoid the bad, the really bad effects. So, seems super powerful. It helps you when you're casting spells, too. If you don't draw an auto-fail, you might be able to exclude the tokens that would deal horror to you with Shriveling. Yep. Or or whatever. Or choose the ones that would get you an extra clue with Sixth Sense. Like, whatever whatever you're looking for, you're a lot more likely to find it with her. Uh, seems, seems real, real good. Uh, she... It is once per round, right? So, uh, if you use it on a treachery or something, you don't even have it for the investigator phase. And it can be given to an investigator at your location, but again, that would use yours for the round. So it's flexible, but it's not going to be there for nearly every draw. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Kind of my one other thought is, my understanding of these packs is they are intended to be uh, a good, uh, like a, a decent idea to hand this to a new player and say like, mm -hmm. or, or suggest that a new player who would like to own some of their own cards buy one to play with you. Um, I don't know if I would introduce someone to Arkham and like, the concept of the chaos bag with this you know <laughs> this like here's what the chaos bag is by the way draw three and choose two to cancel um i don't know i i'm not i'm not sold on that being a, a good new player investigator i mean i don't think it's like that complex of a idea though and you're still doing regular draws the rest of the turn so i don't think it's sure that bad. sure yeah and I mean, as, as you're teaching, you could always just say, hey, don't pay attention to our text for the first two rounds of the game, and then we'll, and then we'll introduce it. Like, that, that, that is totally reasonable if you're playing The Gathering or, or what have you. Um, yeah. Okay. I, I, oh, and I also ahead. think that for a lot of newcomers, this is going to be your second investigator or your first non-core set investigator, which I think this is totally doable. Right, yeah. So that kind of fantasy of a, a new player, it would have to be someone who is planning on using your encounter cards. Otherwise, they would already own the core sets. And yeah, this would not actually be their first investigator. Um, very, very true. Yeah. Um, okay. I assume she has some signature cards. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's actually, strangely, not the first. Oh, it is the first. It thing, is the first it, thing. It's just but purple. But it's a mystic bag. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. That's a little confusing. Um, but yeah, it's a three-cost asset, Arbiter of Fate. Uh, it's a talent. Jacqueline Fine only. Uh, reaction when you use Jacqueline Fine's reaction ability. Exhaust Arbiter of Fates. The use of her ability does not count towards its limit. Uh, so you get to do it twice. Mm. Um, and interesting. Uh, and it's a picture of her eyes with like some weird lines over it. Um, yeah, this is, I think, the first time that a signature has just been like, do more of the, sig of the ability. Yeah. Yeah, I, I this seems really wordy for what it is, which is basically it just says your ability is now twice per round. <laughs> yeah, I think I would have I would have actually yeah, if there's a way to just phrase it as her ability gains limit twice per round, you know, yeah. it's a little more clear what you're doing. Right. Um, but uh I guess this way you tap it to track that you've used it the first time. True. Yep. Yeah, you exhaust it for the first use, which is also kind of weird because you don't have a way to indicate the other use of her mm, ability, yeah. right? I guess you can exhaust, like, her card. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it's a little wonky. Um, okay, first, so on the subject of, you pointed out, this card is purple. Most signature assets are not I colored. hate that. For especially really? for a Yeah, especially for a beginner thing, like, why confuse them with a different rule? Like, it should either, like... Okay. Yeah, now they're going to be confused by all the other investigators. So that is true. Um, I agree that it is strange that this is different from the rest of the game. I think that this is how the game always should have been. I think that it is kind of strange that signatures are neutral when the when the investigator itself, with the exception of one of them, is uh, is a color, is a class. Uh, so I've always thought that that was kind of weird that they were neutral. And I like that 
now that we have more cards in the carpool, I don't think the core set ever had any cards that were like, retrieve a card of a certain class from your discard pile, but now that we have more of them, giving them the, the giving the signatures the class allows those card interactions, which I think is great. Um, I actually kind of assumed when this was previewed, I don't know that it was this card, but when they, they revealed these and, and it was, it became known that they would be colored, I assumed that this would just be the way forward for the foreseeable future of Arkham, because to me, it was so obviously a better thing to do, but it doesn't look like that will be the case for the Insmith Conspiracy Investigators, so. Weird. And yeah, I, I would not. have, I would have made that change. I'm fine with that change. Mm -hmm. I would have made it in Insmith because like, that's a very, like, people who are playing Insmith have probably been playing three or four Arkham cycles, so. Right. They're not going to be too confused, but yeah, it's weird for a beginner product. Yeah, I mean, if this is literally the first time that a new player has held Arkham cards, they're not going to know that it's weird, right? I guess, yeah. <laughs> but if this is the second thing after the core set, it definitely raises the question, like, what, what do I do with this, with this information that this is purple and these other ones are neutral? Um, yeah, super weird. Um, it's really hard to evaluate how good this is. Right, right. Like there are definitely this, this has good icons, and there are definitely some investigators with signature cards that you will usually use for their icons rather than their ability. This does cost three. Uh, obviously, takes an action to play it. Um, it's yeah, it's tricky to evaluate how good using her ability twice per round is. Do you do you think that this is actually gonna I mean, hit the table a lot? I think as long as you have money. Um... Mm -hmm. It's probably worth playing. I mean, her ability is good, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know if if there's other economy cards that are going to be in here, um, or if she can take advantage of just things like uh, Uncaged Soul has always been a good economy card. Um, right. Oh well. Um, Uncaged I mean, this Soul is a can't spell, play this. This is a talent. Yeah. But if you use that to play your shriveling or or sure. the, whatever new attack spell she has, then maybe you can afford it. Yeah, and this is going to be better in multiplayer, I think, because her ability is transferable to other investigators. You're yeah. in multiplayer, you're a lot more likely to want it two more times per round. Definitely, yeah. Single right. player, there might not be two really important tests. Uh, right, right. Um, okay, she has a weakness. Actually, she has weakness. Oh no, this okay. Uh this starter deck includes a new basic weakness I'm seeing now. Uh but first her signature weakness is Dark Future. It is an Omen and an End Times traded card. That's ominous. Um, revelation, put it into play in your threat area. You cannot ignore any of the icon tokens, including Elder Signs. Forced, at the end of your turn, reveal five random tokens from the Chaos Bag. If an Elder Sign symbol is revealed, discard Dark Future. Hmm. Interesting. So this, there's nothing you can do to get rid of it, but like, but it's almost like you don't have to do anything to get rid of it, but you also have no control over how long it will remain in play. Well, can you not use her ability in order to reveal seven at the end of your turn? Like, if you haven't used her ability yet, then oh. I think you can reveal two additional. That's true. You could save her ability to draw seven tokens on this forced effect, as, as far as I can tell. Yeah. Uh, and and I don't really know why you would use her ability for anything besides this, unless you had used it and then you drew it mid-turn. Oh, yeah, because as long as this is in play, you could not cancel... I mean, it could still let you cancel the minus fours or something if you're really scared of those, or if you're playing on expert and there are minus eights in the bag. Yeah. But <laughs> you're right, a lot of the time, you would probably devote her ability to, to getting rid of this as soon as possible. Hmm. Um, also, this is clearly dark phoenix like just blatant uh i don't understand the reference x x-men oh. turns into dark phoenix like i this is so dark phoenix i'll have to take your word for it i'm not the biggest x-men fan but yeah. uh it is it awesome art yeah yeah i mean it's and that happens in space and this is sort of like phoenix looking and yeah yeah like yeah because this is her yeah like literally out in almost like in orbit <laughs> as the world explodes behind her huh yeah you're right the there's a lot of references in arkham they are usually <laughs> quite intentional so <laughs> i'm sure you're onto something um okay interesting dichotomy so her signature asset doubles her ability and her signature weakness just turns it off yeah <laughs> it's 
plus one ability, minus one ability, or minus all abilities, I guess. Um, okay, well, since it's next in the pack, want to give us the basic weakness? Yeah, nihilism. It's a madness weakness. Revelation, put nihilism into play in your thread area. Forced, after you reveal, cancel, or ignore an autofail token, take a damage or and of aura. Um, hmm. Interesting. So if you reveal and cancel it, then you take... Oh, no, it's an or. So yeah, so it's just saying you can't get out of this by canceling it, which gotcha. kind of... You can tell that this is in Jacqueline's pack because it's a basic weakness for most investigators. They are not going to, like no one's canceling auto fails all that yeah. often, right? <laughs> Maybe some other mystics um, and even survivors can find some tricks, but that definitely seems like okay. This basic weakness was designed for Jacqueline. Yeah, uh, and it's double click to discard nihilism. Um, cool one for Jacqueline. Uh, pretty pretty darn weak for anyone else like yeah this doesn't seem that that scary at all like i think that if i drew this in the mid game or later i would almost never double click this right you would just be like eh maybe i'll reveal and one or two auto fails like yeah i mean it's it's going to depend on it's going to depend on what the your how much health and sanity you're at right how much soak you have in play if you are on the edge, if you're almost defeated, like, yes, it, it is still probably a priority to get rid of this. But otherwise, yeah, like, who cares? How much does, how much do you draw an autofail as a regular, in, as a, as a investigator, as a non, someone who's not playing tricks with a chaos bag as, uh, uh, like, you know, two to three times per entire game on average. So, yeah, I'd probably just float this in play a lot of the time. Okay, so uh, by adding this to the basic weakness pool, it's a buff to all investigators. <laughs> it's yeah. it's, it's a pretty they, tame weakness. I guess they had to include a basic weakness because these decks have to be legal, you know? True. Um, yeah, I guess I hadn't really processed that because the whole idea is that you can open up the pack, shuffle yeah. this up, and play it. Um, I think there are going to be some reprints in here, though, so it could have been a basic weakness reprint. I'm glad yeah. it's not. Like, that's, yep. that's cool that it's not. Um, yep. But yeah, kind of kind of an unexpected surprise. Um, I am getting uh, less and less excited about basic weaknesses the more there are, just because there are what, 40-ish? So I'm going to see this, you know, if I play a campaign a month, I'm going to see this once every five years. Yeah, <laughs> but... I mean, I, I often do cheat and just like randomly select like a new weakness or something. Sure, yeah. Especially or, when there are new products out. Yeah, I'm more like, likely to be like... redraw if I get something like Paranoia that like we've all seen a million times. Like, except for, it is kind of funny when you get like Paranoia when you're trying to do like a big money investigator. Mm -hmm. uh, or is it Amnesia? Like the one that makes you lose all your money. Like, uh, that is Paranoia, I think. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's kind of funny. And But otherwise, if I get like a boring old weakness, I might just redraw that and try to get a new weakness. So. Yeah, true. You cannot, you know, it's your game. You can do what's fun. Um. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I, I guess, I guess I'm just gonna flip through this and kind of call out the cards as we see them, and we won't dwell a lot on the cards that are not new. Yeah. But speaking of reprints, the next thing in this pack is two copies of Ritual Candles. So, uh, you know, kind of a mediocre but not unfun card, and fits but... with the theme of like mm -hmm. revealing certain stuff. True. Yeah, with with Jacqueline, she could get plus three. Th there is there is a lot more potential value. Um, yeah. Well, wait. Do you get them if you cancel them, or wait? I don't think yeah. you get them if you cancel them, right? Uh, because that's... it's the it's the same as like the basic weakness that says that makes you take the damage and horror if you cancel it. Mm. Okay. I I don't. Yeah, that part's always confusing. Yeah, it, it is. It's always been a little wonky, and it kind of, it really quite seldomly comes up to where I've never quite learned it. Um, there's YouTube comments below to help us out, everyone. Um, okay, uh, let's... Here's the new card. Scrying Mirror. It is a three-cost mystic asset. By the way, all the cards for the foreseeable future are level zero. Uh, it uses four secrets... It's an item and a charm. It says, as a reaction, after a skill test at your location begins, exhaust Scrying Mirror and spend one secret. 
perform the reveal chaos token step of the test now before committing cards instead of after committing cards. And did I say this takes up a hand slot? It takes up a hand slot. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, it's kind of like it's the card is prophesy, right? The one that mm. takes a token out of the bag, seals it yeah. on that card, and then it must be the next token that you you test with. It's kind of a lot like that. Just it's a it's four of them on a stick, right? Uh, I mean, there's some other disadvantages like that one. You can just decide to do a useless action to burn like a really bad token. Um, mm. Like if you get an auto fail, you can be like, "All right, well, I try to investigate instead of trying to attack this retaliate boss." You can't do that with this. Like, um, you know, you can't. If you get an auto fail, you can't. There's not adding a card to it isn't going to help you there. Uh, so it's not as good as doing that four times. True. Yeah, that's a good point. But um, it's still doing something kind of like it four times, which is pretty. Yeah, I think that the more common outcome of Prophesy, though, is that you learn exactly what token is going to be drawn. So not, you can... not Prophesy. Prophecy is the uh, Doom one. It's, uh, mm. uh, yeah, it's something else. Dark Prophecy or? No, it's. There's a lot of, there's a lot of cards about Prophecy. Yeah, I don't think Prophecy. Uh, I'll, I'll find it and put it on the screen right now. Uh, <laughs> if you're watching this, you'll know what we're talking about, even though we don't. That is the magic of editing. Um, yeah, so, but the, the outcome of that card most often is that, like, okay, I know exactly how many icons or whether it's worth spending icons on the next test. And that, that part it, is done by this. Um, it seems really good, especially yeah. for a mystic that doesn't care about their hand slots as much as a lot of classes. Yep. Okay. Uh, Azure Flame is new, right? Yeah, so three cost asset, spell, got four charges. Uh, and you can spend a charge to fight, use will instead of fight, and deal plus one damage. If a Elder Sign plus one or zero token is revealed, take one damage. So it's like reverse shriveling. Uh, there's three things that make you take a damage instead of three things that make you take a horror. And they are all um, positive things. Uh, it, interesting. So with shriveling a lot of the time, since the those are worst tokens you would fail and take the horror and this one most of the time if you take the damage from the backfire you are also going to succeed on your attack mm -hmm. huh. um, that seems like the main difference to me yeah and Jacqueline Fine actually wants to cancel her elder sign so like mm. that kind of worked out for her um, the only thing that might be a little tough there's two things that are tough one is she only has six health so she actually would kind of prefer to be taking horror like shriveling. Um, the other mm. is that if you get a zero or like a plus one, and then you get like a minus three and a minus four, um, if you cancel the the zero in order to not take the damage, um, you might even if you cancel one of the other ones, like the minus four, you might still fail with the minus three. So, sure. um, so she might actually still prefer shriveling. I think. Um, but there is a little bit of synergy in that she likes canceling all the time. Yeah, and I guess and then outside of, like, these cards are not only just yeah. in Jacqueline's deck, but being added to the card pool for anyone to use. Um, I think it's pretty exciting. I still think Mystics in general, for most of the reasons you just listed, would still prefer Shriveling, just because damage is scarier than horror. Um, but there are cards that... that you can put in your deck to deal with the damage, or just possibly the fact that, I don't know, I, I almost need to feel, I almost would need to play with it and see how it feels to, like, shriveling is fail more, and this one is trade-off-y, fail and succeed, mm -hmm. and I don't know how to value that and how to see how that's going to kind of, like, feel during a game. And there are a couple things, so Jim, if he treats his Elder Sign as a skull, does he not take this damage? Um, um, I think that is how it would work. If he treats his Elder yeah. Sign as a skull, he would not take this damage. Yeah. Um, so there's Jim has a bit of a synergy, and also the card crystallized crystallized Elder Sign. Mm -hmm. You get rid of an Elder Sign or a plus one. So there's a little bit of synergy there. This goes great with crystallized Elder Sign. Yeah. So um, Mateo also has his signature that takes the Elder Sign out of the bag, right? Yep. Yep. This goes great with that too. That's interesting. Huh. I like it. 
I'm happy for more... Uh, like, the, there are so many more Guardian guns than there are Mystic attack spells. Yeah. And so few of them really, like, hold a candle to Shriveling that that I'm I'm happy for more options. I hope we'll get there next video, but I hope that there's, like, leveled up versions of this, too. So you can kind of... Right? That would be another kind of downer is if you start with this and then, like, well, I guess now I upgrade into Shriveling because, <laughs> because it's the only higher level option. So I hope that that's later in the pack. I guess we'll see when we get there. Um, okay, Clairvoyance is a four cost spell asset that takes up an arcane slot and has uses three charges, action spend one charge, investigate. Investigate using willpower instead of intellect. If you succeed, discover one additional clue at this location. If an elder sign plus one or zero token is revealed during this investigation, take one horror. So this one's a twist on right of seeking. Yep, I think everything we just said is true for this. Basically, except for this one does horror, right? Where right of seeking, uh, right of seeking lost is like action. It it's lost action. action. So this one isn't kind of as like uh, as like yin and yang to right of seeking as as azure flame was to shriveling. Yeah, I feel like both of them have a slightly worse drawback because right of seeking. I mean, most people just kind of do it on their last action to yeah. get around the downside. Mm -hmm. uh, every once in a while, you have nothing to do with your first two actions, so you might chance it on the second one. Uh, but a lot of times getting too close per turn is enough for your mystic. It's not like they're a seeker, so they just yeah. the last action. Yeah, this certainly has kind of that option to blow through all three charges in one turn that you don't feel like you should do with Rite of Seeking. Yeah. Um, and it does discover an additional clue at the location still. Yeah. So well, I would call it. this, this is better than Wait. level zero six cents. Oh. I think. Yeah, although level zero does have unlimited uses so. yeah there's that um but if you get six clues with this card like how many more clues do you need <laughs> you brought a seeker along to get the rest right <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah uh all right well there's in the default deck there's gonna be some competition for the arcane slots because there's another spell want to read us the next one yeah ineffable truth uh has three charges you can spend a uh, charge to evade uses will instead of agility if you succeed, deal one damage to the evaded enemy. Oh, so this is different than Mist of Riley, uh, which did yeah. not deal damage. It's like Mist meets Blinding Light a little bit. Um, and then right. it says, if an Elder Sign plus one or zero token is revealed, lose a resource. Oh. That's not that bad. Yeah, and you can play around that by spending your resources. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, you can't you can't put Dark Horse in your Jacqueline deck, but you could run this in a Dark Horse deck with other investigators. Um, yeah, this seems pretty solid. Uh, I Mist is already a decent card, and I mean Mist does have like a benefit of sometimes being able to move, uh, but that can be a little unpredictable. Like you don't always want to move after evading, uh, whereas dealing a mm -hmm. damage is something that you almost always want to do, uh, unless you're like playing solo and just never planning on dealing with that enemy right yeah there are times when the damage might not matter like it had two hit points and your guardian was going to come in and finish it off with for two damage anyway or you just don't plan to kill it but you're right you're always going to do it you're never going to say like well i will not put the damage on in fact i guess yeah. it's not not optional on this card but yeah and uh, i oh yeah so there is one downside uh one hp vengeance enemies in forgotten age not so good at evading, at evading those like uh, uh, pit vipers and things, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> good, um, good point. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, even even if a guardian was planning to come in and shoot it after you evaded it, you know, they can save a bullet and punch it. So yeah, damage is nice. But you know, there are, it's not even just the pit vipers. Um, what is the uh, Silver Twilight Lodge scenario of the Circle Undone campaign where you're like managing the cultists but trying not to kill them? You're trying to get them out the front uh, door. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that um yeah yeah you might be sorry you have this at times but for the most part it seems like a solid card mm -hmm. yeah definitely okay now we have her ally or one of them if she has more than one uh familiar spirit it's a one cost assets it's an ally a creature and a summon that sits in the ally slot uh it appears to be a cat so yet another cat hopefully a yeah. product comes along someday and evens out the score. Uh. 
<laughs> yeah, how how many dogs do you think are going to be in these starter decks? Like, hopefully, at least the survivor has one, right? Uh, we can hope. It's Matt is highly biased towards cats, though. It's uh. it's a problem. Yeah. Uh, but this cat gives you one additional arcane slot, which can only be used to hold a spell asset. <laughs> Thou art wholly unworthy, but I shall serve thee for now. It's kind of good flavor text for this. Um, <laughs> so. Okay, the fir an additional arcane slot is great. Are there other are there non spell assets that go in the arcane slot? Why does it have this? Why does it have oh. this caveat? <laughs> there are oh, uh, I mean, it means that you can't play. Uh, what's the two arcane one that lets you use will instead? Um. Uh, it's good oh. in Patrice. Um, yeah, my, Mind's out. Eye. Mind's Eye. That's the one. Yeah, so you. <laughs> if you somehow had Mind's Eye, and you also like there was some third arcane that like <laughs> also was not a spell, you couldn't play both of those. Like, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of weird. Um, I don't know. Oh. Although one it, thing I guess, um, the uh, the ritual blade, enchanted blade. That's the one. Enchanted oh, yeah. blade is a you know is a stabby thing that takes up an arcane yes. slot. That's not a spell. You would not, so. you would not be able to play mind's eye and enchanted blade at the same time. <laughs> right. Um, or th go ahead. If you have mind's eye and you play this, are you a like or no no? If you have shriveling and then you play this. Are you allowed to shift shriveling to this slot and then play Mind's Eye, or are you not allowed to do that? Like, is shriveling I, considered to be in the original arcane slot? No, I think the game with extra, it's the same with, like, extra actions where you, the, the game just assumes that you're using your bonus action whenever it's possible. I think that this, I think that slots are the same way with bonus slots, that it's, like, the most generous possible interpretation. Yeah, then, then it seems incredibly pointless to have that text. So. Yeah, because it's only if all of your arcane slots are taken up by non spells that this matters. Yeah, that I, I is. Do... Yeah, that is pretty silly. Um, okay, the, the card itself though, this is garbage, right? Uh, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, so we saw it's too cheaper, but but not fast compared to sign magic. Yeah, uh, but three cost and a hand slot to get an arcane slot. But that's not a very good card to begin with. The, yeah. Uh, and, and then there's... This, this is your ally slot, right? There's nothing else you can... ally slot's better than a hand slot for a mystic. And ally slot's the best slot. <laughs> well, I mean, hand, like, for guardian, hand slot is up there. But I, for, mystics, I guess. for mystics, yeah, there's not a lot of coming. And, and uh, yeah, I, and I, I mean, I guess mystics actually maybe have, a lot of the time, the least kind of dependence on allies for their archetypes, right? Like, Renfield is very strong, and there are other... Diana, Esperance is very strong. There are strong mystic allies, but they rarely, like, are, are kind of part of what... Like, a key part of what makes your deck work. Um, you know, they're, they're not that focal, but still, I've got to think that you'd rather run kind of a quote-unquote real ally than, than this one that just converts it into an arcane slot. I mean, the, the one thing that this does, that Sign Magic does, is that it does have a little bit of soap. So, like, let's say you've got your Shriveling or the new, the new one. You've mm -hmm. got your Rite of Seeking or the new one, Clairvoyance. You want to play your Miss of Riley or what's it called? Uh, Ineffable Truth. Um, so you play the third one. But then you use your last Rite of Seeking charge. Now you can just use this for soak. So it does have, like, an additional thing that it does that Sign Magic didn't. True. And yeah, that is the nature of spells, is that most of them use charges, and so you might need that slot now and then not care about dropping that slot later, so... Yeah, that, that's, you're not wrong. <laughs> but all those other allies you could be using this slot for also have soak, and usually more than one in one. <laughs> yeah, well, you could, so you could use this to play your third spell, then once you finish the spell, you kill it off, and then maybe you do play your Arcane Initiate or something, like... Olive McBride or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, 
I mean, I think this is going to see a lot of play because a lot of people, myself included, are going to want to try playing the Jacqueline deck totally. as as it comes out of the package. Uh, but then I think I see putting this into my binder and not taking it out again. <laughs> it's probably the future for this card. Uh, which is fine. They can't all be winners. Um, moving on. And that looks like, unless it's later in this deck, I think that's her only ally. So, that is, that is very sad. Uh, but she has an accessory. Yeah, this is uh, Crystal Pendulum, a two-cost asset, item, and charm. You get plus one will. Uh, and then response, after a skill test at your location begins, exhaust Crystal pen Pendulum, name a number. If the test succeeds by that number, or fails by that number, draw one card. Uh, so this is Holy <laughs> Rosary, but with no soak, with a weird ability. I think I love it. I don't know if it's good. Like, Holy Rosary might be the better card. <laughs> but I think this ability is fun. I think, I mean, in Jacqueline, I think it's pretty good. Because you have a decent amount of control over what you're going to succeed or fail by. Mm -hmm. uh, and it works with both. So if you say one, you have three chances to either succeed by one or fail by one. Right. So... Um, yeah, I think it's worth it in Jacqueline. Not, I have not done the math at all about whether this is worth it. Outside. What you just you just read this card for the first time and haven't run the numbers yet? <sighs> Shame on you. Uh, yeah, I think so. They fit really two different needs, right? So what soak is always about is not losing. You know, so holy holy rosary makes you lose the game slower, whereas drawing cards generally gives you more power to find those clues, kill those uh, uh, what am I saying? Kill, the mon kill the enemies, move around the board so drawing cards helps you win as opposed to soak helps you not lose so that's the question, are you trying to win sooner or are you trying to just not lose and I think different investigators and different decks and different people with different play styles will all have different answers for that, so I think it's well, cool and I do think that 80% of the point of Holy Rosary is the will boost. So yes. it's like, you're just going to play this one because it's more fun and it's new. Um, yeah, and you're right. You're right. <laughs> I'm going to play this instead of Holy Rosary all the time until I'm tired of it. <laughs> just because it is fun and new. And yeah, I'm glad to see the willpower boost because Mystics pretty much need that to be on any accessory for it to compete with Holy Rosary, because that willpower boost is just so good when it's what they use for almost all of their tests. Yep. Uh, okay, I think this one was previewed and was pretty cool. The Robes of Endless Night. This is awesome art, by the way. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Yeah, this... I don't even know how to describe it. The, like, sleeves of this robe are out like, like claws. Cool, love it. Uh, it's a three-cost mystic asset. It sits in your body slot. It's an item and clothing. And as a reaction, when you play a spell card, exhaust robes of endless night to reduce the cost of that card by one. It has two damage soak. It says dark is the abyss without, bright is the abyss within. Flavor text is on point. I like that. Okay, so it's a leather coat plus three resources to get an unknown number of discounts over the course of the game. Mm -hmm. What do you think? So my first thought is, it seems awesome. Um, if only for the two soak, and like it'll probably pay for itself. That being said, you did bring up Leather Coat. Do you know, like, does Agnes ever play Leather Coat? Like, I can't. Not something that really comes to mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the thing is, so for this to be better than leather coat, you have to you, you have to get its discount four times. So you have to play it pretty early in the game. You have to not consume it for its soak until you've used it at least four times, and you have to play at least four spells. That's not a given that you're going to do that in all or even most games. Definitely. Um. So yeah. I don't know. I'm not super sold on this being all that strong. I do think what, one thing to keep in mind is if you're playing Azure Flame, you might need the soak more than Mystics typically did. That's a good so. point. 
And if you're playing, what is the one that can cost you a resource? It is Ineffable Truth. You might need the discount. <laughs> More than Mystics usually do. Yep. Um, cool. And then Mystics don't use their body slot much at all that I yeah. can think of. So, like, that's kind of a non-issue. Okay, so it's a cool card. I'm slightly underwhelmed by it, though, other than the art, which I am whelmed, if not overwhelmed by. That's super cool. Um, next in the pack is Astral Travel. Two copies of that. We've seen that before. Uh, it seems to be, it's, it's a movement spell that seems to, again, be in here because Jacqueline can help it not punish you by canceling those tokens, right? Yeah, it's, I always hated this card because it was so much worse than Elusive, and, like, maybe yeah. it's not quite as extreme now, but... Yeah, well, and Elusive got tabooed. And it got tabooed. <laughs> maybe it's all right. Yeah. Um, there's also two Hypnotic Gazes, which are those ones that cancel an attack and have the p possibility to deal the attacking enemy's damage to itself. I think this is a card that's always been too expensive for what it is. Um, but it is a little better with Jacqueline, so... Yeah. Then it's interesting. And then, then we come to another new one. Want to give it to us? Yeah. Uh, Parallel Faith. It's a zero-cost event. Uh, it's type Augury. And uh, look at the top four cards of the encounter deck. Reveal a random token from the chaos bag. If it has any special to uh, symbol, any of the bad ones, mm -hmm. shuffle those cards into the encounter deck. Otherwise, return them to the top of the encounter deck in any order. Hmm. If I said that I could tell you when you were going to die, would you want to know? Uh so I. I guess under normal circumstances, there's about a two thirds chance that you get to look at and rearrange the top four mm -hmm. cards, and there's like a one third chance that don't really do anything. Um, I think this card is only a Jacqueline card because Jacqueline potentially gives you the option to choose whether you want to put them on top in any order or shuffle them back in. And I oh think, yeah, because you look at the top four first. That's a great point. You look at the top four, and then you reveal a token, and then if you're using Jacqueline's ability, you might get to choose whether to trigger a symbol and shuffle them back in, or trigger a non-symbol and keep them on top. That's Otherwise, cool. I think this is super weak. I think we established with the various tiers of scrying yeah. that looking at the it's top like, of the encounter like, deck is not that good. It's like a one-shot scrying, which is yeah. weird. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, all in all, I'd say pretty weak card. Probably not something I'd play in anything but Jacqueline, but it's at least a little bit interesting. Could help you find yeah. Jazz Mulligan. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Hmm. Okay. Uh, wow, more cool art. And more of Jacqueline in front of a flaming inferno of a planet. Uh, the Voice of Ra. It's a zero-cost mystic event. It is a spell. It says gain one resource. Reveal three random tokens from the Chaos Bag. For each icon you reveal, gain an additional two resources. Okay, so ignoring Jacqueline, this is emergency cash, but it's gain an uncontrollable amount of resources between one and seven. <laughs> yep. And then Jacqueline has a little more control over it because she could use her ability to reveal five tokens. And so I guess... It's not reveal five and choose three to resolve, though. It would be replace one of those draws with a triple, and like you're, re you're definitely resolving two of them, and then you're choosing one of those three that are grouped. Right? Is how those interact? Uh, no, I think it's, it's reveal two additional. When you reveal, reveal two additional. Oh. Then you choose and cancel two. Oh, so it's not like, um, it's not like Grotesque Stone, where you like are kind of replacing one draw with two draws. It's actually just two additional. Yeah, so Jacqueline says when you would reveal any number of chaos tokens. I don't okay. Know what grotesque stat maybe grotesque statue just said one. Um, I think it's like I we we don't we don't have to dwell on it, <laughs> but <laughs> I think that the way grotesque statue statue? Grotesque stone grotesque so stone grotesque I think is what it is. Says a magic. chaos token. That's the difference. It says a chaos. Oh, okay, so it would replace, like, one of these three draws with its effect. But what she does is she does do what you would want to do here, and she draws five and then cancels two. 
or cancels yeah. one auto fail. In this case, though, you would not cancel the auto fail because the auto fail gives you two resources. Um, okay, I think I like it with Jacqueline and no one else, like a lot of these cards. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, it seems, seems really good for her and seems too unreliable. I guess one thing we should say is some of these ones we're talking about, Jacqueline, are also good in all of the variety decks. Oh, true. Okay. Yeah. She, she helps you find those tokens you want. Um, all of McBride decks it makes it sound like she's an investigator if she's your, if she's your ally. Um, yeah, you know what? This is actually a card that I could see myself throwing into Mystics instead of Emergency Cast just because I am like a, eh, let's just let random shit happen and, and deal with it. And hopefully it will be good sometimes. And I'll feel like I made a great choice putting this into my deck. Like I... I'm a sucker for that kind of, <laughs> of playstyle, so I could see putting that in there. Or, uh, I was just going to say, or putting it into your deck in addition to Emergency Cash, because Mystics are light on Econ options. It is a spell which both Cash and Uncaged Soul are not. So, hmm. you know, if you're trying... Like, I've definitely had decks where I'm like, this is one or two spells short of being, like, consistently having my Initiate hit. Um, right. So that's definitely a plus. Uh, maybe even Agnes's signature will get played someday. Who knows? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, um, Robes of Endless Night discounts this. It costs zero, but if you have like a weakness in your hand, making it cost more. <laughs> that's right. <There's> that <laughs> the robes Carcosa, knock it right back down. The Carcosa, ta the Tattered Robe is canceled by the Robes of Endless Night. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. How about that? Or Tattered Cloak, I guess. The Cloak is canceled yes. by the Rogue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, hey, uh, okay, this is not the card that we were searching for before, but Dark Prophecy is next in this pack. So you got two of these auguries that let you draw five tokens instead of one and choose one with a symbol to resolve. Um, this is probably not actually one you would combine with her ability. It just kind of plays into her theme and is yeah. a fine card. I, th I think that this is not a bad card. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got two Defiance, which is the skill card that lets you name an icon before the test that would be canceled during the test. Is this the only skill card in this whole... Oh, there's one more behind it. There's not a lot of skill mm -hmm. cards in this deck. Um, okay, sure. You can name a token and then find that token with her ability and then cancel it. If you really yeah. need a if you really need a zero on this test, <laughs> I guess that works. And the final new card from her level zero deck, what do we got? Uh, Prescience. Uh, it's practiced in augury, max one per skill test. Um, af oh, it's practiced, so you can find it with practice. It's perfect. Oh yeah, and it's uh, a skill card. I don't think you said. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, after you commit Prescient to a skill test, name even odd or symbol. After the test ends, if a chaos token of the name type was revealed during this test, you may reveal a uh, you may return a spell card from your discard pile to your hand. Hmm. I see why it's an augury and not a spell, because otherwise you could use two of them and recur them back and forth. Yeah. Um. So that actually kind of synergizes with Voice of Ra, which we just said, like any kind of spell event. Um. Uh, hypnotic gaze. Well. Spell event. Well. So. No, because this is a skill card that you'd only use during a skill test, not like a voice of raw draw. Or, right? Like, we've gone through all no, these no. other cards where you're drawing tokens for other reasons, but this is only for skill test. No, no, what I'm saying is that any spell events immediately go to your discard. So Oh, you can get those back. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, okay. I misunderstood why you were saying it synergized. Right. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, and you're, you're constantly... Well, I don't know about constantly, but... You definitely run into games where you like run through one shriveling, replace it with another shriveling, run through that, and wish you could have a third shriveling. This can yeah. get it for you. But I feel like if you don't have any spell events, it can be a little bit like it can be a while before you've overwritten a spell asset. But as long as you have a few spell events in your deck, you're probably fine. Sure. Yeah. Um, it is unreliable though, right? Having to, it's like the way you have to name even odd or symbol, it seems like it's a roughly one in three chance of working. That's a pretty low chance. Again, obviously, this is Jacqueline's deck. She has abilities. But on its own, I think this is pretty weak. It's just not reliable enough to be yep. exciting. Um, okay, so there's a lot more in the pack, which we're going to cover next video, the level one and up cards. 
Uh, I think that's what the rest of the pack is made up of, unless there's other level zero cards that were not included in her default deck. Uh, but what do you think of her deck itself? And yeah, what do you think of her, her cards, everything? So I think her ability's fun. Uh, there are a lot of cards here that are very similar to other cards. Like, mm -hmm. that would be maybe the one complaint, is that almost every card here, we're, like, comparing it to a similar Mystic card that already exists. Right. Um, even Robes of Endless Night, we're comparing to, like, Leather Coat. Um, so, can't, there's not really a lot in the way of new concepts. Um, so yeah, which for the starter product is fine, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... the the fact that we're getting so many new cards kind of um, takes the blow away a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's not, like, the most exciting. Stuff. Yeah, this is definitely not, like, a shot in the arm for your card pool, you know? Uh, it is maybe a good option. And it, here I am about to judge all five Investigator starter decks based on half of a pack that we've looked at. I was going to say, like, it's maybe a good option to expand your card pool next after the core set because it's just a lot of, like, staple type effects yep um but it's not that exciting if you have every expansion and you already have hundreds and hundreds of cards to choose from yeah it is worth pointing out that like right of seeking was not in the core set you had by right Dumbo. and miss was even further i think it was maybe forgotten age yeah um, true so if you're getting this up to the core set you're rounding out that mystic card pool way way faster than we did when the game actually came out yes totally agreed uh, and then kind of my other thought is a lot of this feel, it kind of feels like Jacqueline has like 20 signature cards, <laughs> right? Like that was a really common refrain as we looked through these is like both A, reprints that, oh, maybe that's worthwhile for the first time because Jacqueline is here now, or B, like, oh, that new card, I don't know if I would ever play it outside of Jacqueline. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah, so I would not call this a huge, like, you know, everyone's excited because we're getting, this is... I don't know, how, how many new cards were in here? I think at least 10. I think there's a 20-ish new cards per pack, so we're getting 100 new player cards all at once. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I, but, you know, maybe two of these were all that exciting to be uh, new elements to our card pool. So, I don't know. My, my excitement for these is, is maybe dipped just the tiniest amount. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm not necessarily the target audience for these. It is definitely the, the younger, the, the metaphorically younger player. So, yeah. hmm. okay, I think it's pretty cool, and I'm excited to see what the rest of the pack is next time. Um, oh, and the card that we couldn't name forever is Premonition. Premonition. Ah, you've got the power of the internet at your fingertips. What? Nice. No, no, I use my augury powers. Oh, <laughs> it, mu it must be that bushy beard providing yeah. those for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, again, this was the first of 10 of these videos. So if you don't subscribe to Optimal Play, uh, please do hit subscribe. You'll see the other nine of them over the next less than nine weeks, but more than four or five weeks. I don't know. It's going to be an avalanche of content for a while. So <laughs> get excited. Um, let us know what you think in the comments. If you see this and respond soon enough, you might even be able to tell us what classes you'd like us to cover next depending on how quickly we get these filmed. So if, if you've got a famous class other, or famous, a favorite class or favorite new investigator other than Mystic that you want us to talk about, feel free to let us know that in the comments too. Um, any final thoughts, Stephen, before we call it a night? Uh, you know, even though they weren't the most exciting cards, uh, definitely new content is super great. Um, I have not played through, like, for Return to a Forgotten Age yet. I'm sure that when I play through that, I'm going to be playing with investigators. Yeah, I completely agree. Pretty much, I think my next five campaigns are going to yeah. be like these five investigators just using their starter decks and their upgrade card pools that come in the pack uh, just to see how that goes. And it's going to be kind of a load off, right? Just, just mm -hmm. narrow down those options, skip the deck building, and just, just get to hit, head straight into the game. I think it'll be cool. Yeah, it's, it's true. Like, as you start to replay these campaigns, you don't necessarily want to spend a huge amount of time so if you could just kind of quickly go through with like yes. a little bit more limited of a card pool and maybe crank through these scenarios that you've done three times already in like an yep. hour and a half uh, that's the way yeah totally agreed um all right with that uh we're gonna call that a video this one ran almost an hour so we've got a, a you know 
a little under 10 hours of talking about these <laughs> in our in our future. So <laughs> I'm excited. I will see you soon, Steven. And thank you for watching. Until next time, be optimal.